in any given moment, you get to stop and go, I want it to be different. I want there to be ease in my life. I want there to be grace in my life. I want to bring the fullness of who I am. And, and what if struggle doesn't have to be the norm? What if we weren't put here to struggle? What if I can bless my path? Because it brought me to, to this place. I love Rumi, you know, writes that, wrote that poem called The Guest House, you know, and that being human, you all these things show up. But what if they've come to sweep out all the old stuff and create something new? And so I think in any given moment, you get to decide, this is the kind of life I want, and that's where I'm going to put my attention. Welcome to Letting Go and the Greatest Secret, where we explore the end of your suffering and the beginning of lasting happiness. I'm Hale Dwoskin, and today I'll be speaking with Cynthia James. Cynthia James is a transformational coach and inspirational leader, guiding people to make changes at a deep level for lasting healing. She excels as an international speaker, coach, singer, and award-winning author of multiple books, including her latest book, Does My Voice Matter? So, Cynthia, tell me, how did you get involved? How did you end up doing the work that you do? Well, you know, I mean, when I was a kid, I thought I was going to be an actress and a singer, and and, and I did do that. And then all of a sudden, um, I started noticing that things from my childhood were coming up as behaviors, and so I started doing self development work, taking mm-hmm. classes, going to workshops, yes. and then I went into um, spiritual psychology program in Los Angeles and found that I loved coaching people, speaking to people, uh, and inviting them to awaken to who they've come here to be. Oh, great. That's great. And so uh, tell me, uh, what does your work involve? What is it you do with people? The biggest thing that I do with people, I mean, is what I call emotional integration. It's mind-body work. You know, everything that's ever happened to us is encoded in the body, Mm -hmm. but we don't know how to get there and we don't know that the body has a language. And so I take them on like three steps. We inquire, we look at what's the current reality, what's happening. Then we go into introspection and we learn how to connect to the body and learn its language and, and also really get real about our behaviors and and the belief systems. And then we move into integration and we use mental, emotional, spiritual techniques to do that. Wonderful, wonderful. And uh, uh, and, and you've also um, just written a book. Uh, oh, yeah. Can you tell me a little bit about your book? It's called, Does My Voice Matter? A Journey of Self-Development, Authenticity and Empowerment. And it talks about my journey, but it's, I, I've been on this planet for seven decades. And so every decade, there was stuff happening culturally. There was stuff happening in my life and in my choices. And there were also lessons. And so that's how the book is created. Every decade has what was happening culturally, memoir-esque stories about me, and then the learning so that the reader can do their own work. Nice, nice. So can you share, uh, that's that's a very broad <laughs> summation. <laughs> can you bring it down a little bit? But first yeah. I have to interrupt. I, you, uh, this is might be silly, but you, you don't look old enough to have been around seven decades. You well, really, thank you. <laughs> you you thank really you. do not. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, sometimes I go, really? But it's true. Yeah. But thank you very much. Well, that's, uh, something is working for you because you look amazing. Thank you. And I know it's not about looks, but I just have to comment. <laughs> yeah, it's energy. And I, I, I've had to learn self-care over the years. And um, I and I come from five generations of women who are abused and traumatized. And my childhood was the same. And so I had to learn 
how do I take care of this gift I have been given called this body yes, and this yes. mind so that I can, you know, be healthy until it's time for me to leave. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. So now, now tell me, uh, what, what else can you share more specifically about from your book that you think our audience would be interested in? Uh, just so you know, our audience is a combination of people who've done my work, which is the Sedona Methods, a tool for letting go of a, any emotional burden or any inner limitation, and people just into self-help and spirituality. So it's a, a broad audience. Beautiful. Well, so the book is called Does My Voice Matter? And what I tell the people at the beginning of the book is when I say voice, I'm not talking about the sound that comes from the larynx or the, the sound that you create when you sing a tone. I'm talking about the fact that the voice is our way of expressing. So it could be writing, singing, speaking, dancing, the way you dress but it's all about stepping into your full authentic being by expressing who you come here to be. Because if that was happening on the planet, I don't think we would be having the discord that we're experiencing now because people would feel fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So so you feel that people uh, in most cases aren't able to express their authentic nature? Well, you know what, I mean, we're, what we're watching in the world today is division and separation and people feeling disenfranchised, people worried about retribution if they speak, you know, all, all those kinds of things. And so that fear energy is kind of pulling people back and not allowing them to step out because, because they're afraid or in doubt on some level. And I get it. But the thing is, is like the people that we admire the most in history have been those people that have stepped beyond their fears and doubts to make a difference. Mm. Yes. And uh, so, uh, so expand more on that. So, well, expand on uh, how would you help someone to find their authentic voice? Again, what I what I like to do in these conversations if I can is I like to bring things forth that people can take away with them mm -hmm. uh, to immediately start working on themselves if they'd like to or exploring themselves or seeing truth from a, a deeper more profound level so absolutely well the first thing I tell people is connect to your passion points what mm -hmm. lights you up what brings you joy whether you can make money at it or not isn't the point. It's like, if it if it brings you joy and enlivens you, I mean, it starts energy flowing in your body temple and, and in your field and it begins to attract itself. So that, that's the first thing I tell people. Mm -hmm. The second thing I tell people is to pause. You know, a pandemic had humanitarian <laughs> pause. <All right. laughs> we all had to sit. Yes. But the thing is, when you start... Um, not thinking clearly, when you start making decisions that aren't um, supportive of you, when you start um, doing things that you know don't support your health and well-being, I feel that those are messages saying, pause, stop, move into a state of reflection, whether that's meditation, whether that's yoga, whether that's hiking, whatever it is, where you pause and you begin to tap into that beautiful intuitive knowing that lives within you and you begin to inquire you know, what are these messages trying to tell me? What really wants to be birthed? What really wants to come forward? And you don't have to make a quantum leap. Everybody's not going to be Mother Teresa or Gandhi. <laughs> right. But you can do little steps that help you feel energized and at peace. You know, moment by moment. When I when I learned to meditate, um, <laughs> Every 30 seconds, I was looking at the clock because I was sure that it was three minutes. Right, and, right, right. and so, but now I meditate, you know, my, my spiritual practice is an hour a day, but it, it started with little incremental steps of practice. Yes. And there's something, even if, you know, you're describing the pause as a way to gain insight about where you're going, but isn't just the pause itself enough 
Isn't there something exquisite about just pausing? I, yeah. I think that in and of itself, uh, for most of us, if when we stop the forward, mo constant forward momentum, even for a few moments, there's there's a, a reset that happens, and it also is beautiful. Would you agree with that? Yeah, and and it it allows you to get still and quiet and just um, move into an observation, an inner observation. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to work in corporate America and it was kind of wild. And um, believe it or not, what I would do is um, I would just close my door and just breathe for a few moments just to allow myself to reset. Well, but that's a good suggestion. Everyone can find their own way of doing a quick reset. Yeah. Which would be really helpful. You have a peace demeanor. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> this this work that I do, I've it's been around since the early 70s, and I've been involved with it since 1976. So I, I started doing this at age 22. Wow, how beautiful. Yeah. So it's had it's had some effect on the way this this body mind shows up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for saying that. So um, what's something else? Oh, wait, you said there were, so the three things is the... Inquiry. There's inquiry. So describe the inquiry. You know, you have to get honest with where you are in the moment. You know, a lot of us try to resist and push things away because we're in judgment. But it's like, you know, are you taking care of yourself? Are you on yourself? I remember years ago, I had an adrenal issue and the adrenal issue came up because I was pushing through. I just kept pushing through. And, and, and finally, I had to sit down and go, okay, this is not working. The doctor wants to put you on all these meds. And, you know, it's like, and so the inquirer became, what is it in me that forces me to want to push through? Yes. And what it was, was I wanted the outside validation to know that I mattered. Right, right. Yes, that's a place that many of us get caught is that working for the outside validation. That's a great insight. So how can people, um, is, is there any steps to this inquiry or is it, mm -hmm. is it unique to each person? Well, it is unique to each person, but it, it's like, where am I? Where am I currently? What am I feeling? How am I behaving? And are those choices supporting me? Those are all good questions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find that uh, any kind of question, uh, when when uh, when you reflect on questions as opposed to trying to convince yourself about beliefs or statements, it reveals a lot more. It opens a lot more. It, it's uh, much more helpful. So those are that's yeah. a great line of inquiry thank you well i'm glad you said that because i have a i have questions that i ask the universe every morning as a part of part of my spiritual practice so my mind doesn't get in there and try to figure everything out right <laughs> that's a big one that really is a big one i mean if we don't realize how much we're hanging out in what we believe we know as opposed to just genuinely responding to what is that's right and this, it's it has a very different feel to it, and it has a very different result, doesn't it? Hundred percent. You know, when I'm in my mind, chaos usually follows because I'm all over the place, and I, you know. But when I drop in, and I ask, you know, what is my zone of genius? What am I here to do? What What does my future self want me to know? All of a sudden, things come in that where my mind would have just been on a to do list. Yes, yes, yes. We can get lost in those. Right. Yeah. 
So we've covered two of the three. Well, I, I'm sorry, what was the three again? So inquiry. Inquiry. Introspection. Introspection. And then the last one is integration. And the integration... Really, ah, yes, we haven't talked about that. We have talked yeah. about the other two. Yeah, so integration really is taking the tools that you have and, and implementing them. It, it's like you can have a great deal of understanding, but if you don't practice it, then you're just going to repeat the same old pattern. And so, so I, I teach people how to, if something's happening, where is it in the body? And to invite them to connect to that part of the body and allow it to give them information, to give them messages so that they can begin to integrate how they want to be as opposed to old behaviors that keep them safe. Mm. Yes, that, isn't that a key for a lot of people? We mm. we think our our habit patterns are keeping us safe, but they're often anti survival as opposed to pro survival. Exactly. Wouldn't you agree? Well, yeah, and and it just keeps you in a state of anxiety and and um, trying to push the river and make things happen. Um, you know, um, my friend Michael Beckwith always says the. Um, pain pushes till the vision pulls. If you get out of that painful state and allow the vision, the universe will sync up with you and start bringing things to you that you could never have imagined or thought of because you're in this field of possibility. And so that's what I want people to do. That's what the integration does. It gets you into that field of potentiality and possibility so that you can just open to what the universe has for you. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I love this thing about not pushing the river. That's another thing that if everyone just, uh, if everyone could just sit back a little and let that the power that is the way lead even a little more, just a tiny bit more, everything turns out better. Wouldn't you agree with that? Well, a hundred percent, you know, when you're pushing, you know, it's, it, it's like you don't really believe that the universe has you. <laughs> it's right. like I'm gonna make this happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna make this plan come to fruition, and and the way the universe it's in flow. I mean, you know, I, I remember watching birds flying in formation. You know, and it was like nobody was saying, "Okay, now turn left and turn right." They were just in the flow, and it's like the the animal world, the plant world. You know the water world works that way yes and yes. we're part of that kingdom so why not do the same exactly and also aren't we already the flow as opposed to being in the flow in other words yes that there is a flow that the this particular body mind is already just a natural a part of and we just miss it we're because we're so busy trying to be somewhere else or or do something else or be something else instead of just being what we are. Do you agree with that? Well, and accepting and loving what we are. Yes. You know, I mean, we live in such a culture that's, that's competitive and it's like, well, I need to look like this and I need to walk like this and I need to speak like this. And, and so you're trying to get to that place and it has nothing to do with who you are. Right. <laughs> well, it's it's what society says. Our parents, our friends, our relatives, our 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 companions. Uh, you know, we're, we're rarely just being authentic to ourselves. Well, yeah. And here's the thing: when you're authentic, you create trust. People can trust who you are because you're going to show up that way. You're going to speak your truth. You're not going to hide and you're not going to have all kinds of agendas. You're just going to come. And then people can begin to trust that, oh, this is a safe place for me to be myself. Yes. Yeah, the, the key is that when, when there's a safety in, in being, it's contagious. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that's why teachers um, who can create safe space in groups. Yes. All of a sudden it, it becomes an energy where the whole room rises. Yes, totally. I mean, that, that's definitely what happens. There's a, and it's really not the teacher doing it. It's just something that's, it's a, 
it's not even a co-creation it's just what happens when we get together to support each other in in truth it, yeah exactly and all the then all the guards come down and yes. all the ways of protection get to come down because you just get to be there yes Oh, talk a bit, little bit about how the past doesn't define us. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I actually did a TED talk on this. You know, um, when you come from generations of pain and struggle, yes, the messaging is that's life. You're here to have pain and struggle, and so that's how my family was. And my grandmother, I, 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 I called what she did kitchen wisdom, because we'd all be in the kitchen and she'd be cooking and she'd be going, telling us, "Now you're black, keep your head down, don't make waves." You know, I mean, she would be saying all of these things, and so you, because you start believing that, then then you create that reality. Yes. And like, but what if, what if? In any given moment, you get to stop and go, I want it to be different. I want there to be ease in my life. I want there to be grace in my life. I want to bring the fullness of who I am. And, and what if struggle doesn't have to be the norm? What if we weren't put here to struggle? What if I can bless my path because it brought me to to this place i love Rumi. you know writes that wrote that poem called the guest house you know and the being human you all these things show up but what if they've come to sweep out all the old stuff and create something new and so i think in any given moment you get to decide this is the kind of life i want and that's where i'm going to put my attention yes and, and also the this given moment is is already wholeness it's already complete exactly as it is that's again back to the pause we talked about is we usually live life as though it's a progression and yes on some level it is from the perspective of the personality but isn't this moment whole complete and enough as it is 100 percent in fact um <clears throat> My husband is a photographer and we were invited to India. We got married in 1999 and we were invited to India to the synthesis dialogues with the Dalai Lama. And I was in awe watching the Dalai Lama who 100% present with what he was seeing, what he was hearing, what he was experiencing. And I thought, wow, what if we could all do that? What if we weren't future casting and popping into the past? What if we could all just be here and in acceptance and joy at this moment? I mean, it makes a huge difference. And I, I'm still practicing, but I'm better at it than I was because like being with you is my gift of the moment. Yes. And that's true for everyone listening or watching. This is the gift of the moment, but it is in every moment. What, whoever you're with, whatever you're doing, whatever, even the things you're not doing, that even those are gifts. Just yes. what is, is already yes. the gift. Yeah. You know, and, and, I, and I just want to say, and being alive is the gift. Uh, we live in the mountains and I, I walk a lot. And I was walking up the road one day and it was just beautiful. And there was this peaceful thing. And there was all of a sudden there was this energy and this thing that came over me. It said, how lucky are you to be alive? How lucky are you to be incarnated in this moment? How lucky are you? And I thought, wow, I should be thinking that every moment. How lucky am I <laughs> yeah. to, to be present now? Yes. Yes, that's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> so... Um, do you have um, anything? Well, we talked about the the, the three things. Um, mm -hmm. Anything else like that from the book or from your work that you'd like to share? Yeah, I guess what I want to tell everybody is your challenges are portals of transformation. If you stop looking at them as this horrible thing happening to you, if you look at it as what what's what's the opportunity here? What 
what's the reason? Then, you know, what choices did I make? You know, what would I do differently? How do I want to re respond as opposed to react? You know, and so for me, when something's coming up that's 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 triggering me or something, I, I'm like, okay, all right, if this is a portal of transformation, what's what's my opportunity here? What do I need to learn? What do I need to inquire about? Mm -hmm. You know, has this happened before? And if it has and it's showing back up again, it's because I didn't learn the lesson. What's the lesson? Mm -hmm. And where does that lead? Where does that lead us when we do that? Clarity, um, self honesty. You know, um, it moves us out of victim mentality, thinking someone or something has control over us and how we live. And you know, um, when you come from abuse and trauma as a kid I mean that's kind of a, a reflex but when I look at my life today compared to where I came from I'm really clear it, it's because I started looking at opportunity as opposed to threat or victimology or or you know some kind of struggle mentality you know, not that I don't have my stuff and not that stuff doesn't come up in my life, but it's like, I get to choose how I respond. I get to choose what I say and how I react. Hmm. Yeah, so you're, you're taking responsibility for what's happening in your life. 100%. Yes, that's beautiful too. Mm -hmm. And what what is it that motivated you to uh, put it in a book, to write this particular book. <laughs> okay, this is a story. <laughs> oh, good, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was at a uh, transformational leadership council meeting, and there's an incredible woman whose name is Sam Horn. She coaches yes, yes. people. Yeah, I know. And her. we were having lunch. And she's like, well, what's on your mind? What are you thinking about? And I was telling her that I was aware that my clients and the people that I work with, you know, are, you know, constantly saying, you know, I don't know if I matter. I don't know if my voice matters. And, and so I was telling her that I was thinking of writing this book called Does Your Voice Matter? Mm -hmm. So she starts asking me questions, personal questions. Yes. And I'm answering and she says, I don't know, maybe this book should be called Does My Voice Matter? And this energy went through me and I'm like, okay, pay attention. <laughs> so I went up to my room and I bought the URL and a, a lot of things happened. I, um, um, one of my dear friends uh, is a Hay House author and introduced me to Hay House and I gave them the book proposal and, and they said, oh, we love your writing. We love your voice, but your platform's not big enough. And so we're going to say no. And it was something, it was like I had gone back to age six where all the rejections that started then, you know, just, and, and I just kind of put the book down. But when the pandemic came and I had to pause, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> all of a sudden, everything started flooding in. That this was, that if I was going to leave a legacy, because and part of my legacy, I believe, is I want people to know that I'm not an exception, I'm an example, and, and they can do anything I can do. And so yes. it was like, if I'm willing to be raw, if I'm willing to tell the truth in this book, then I can show people that they can do the same on yes. whatever level and bring their gifts to the planet. And so I wrote it and, um, and then I, I got a publisher, but it was, there were moments of tears, there were moments of sadness, there were moments of, of laughing at some of the crazy stuff I did. And, and so it's all in the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes, sometimes whole life changes start very simply. Or big projects start very simply. Actually, they always do. But we, we, we often miss the, the, um, the, whatever it is, the causative factor, it, it just, 
goes by and then we just find ourselves in a new direction don't even realize it's changed yes right we don't even realize and and i'm very grateful um to have done this book and to um the people that have read it and the people who um have written me about about what it's done for them all of them said i'm so grateful that you were willing to be seen because it's given me permission to be seen yes yes or, or again it's re authentic authenticity breeds authenticity yes yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know I, I i really feel like if we could all remember that we're extraordinary unique expressions that we're unrepeatable manifestations on this planet that nobody can do what we came here to do well then there's a freedom that comes with it hmm. yes there's a freedom in recognizing that whatever the expression is is already perfection exactly exactly hmm. So, uh, do you uh, you have a, do you have a meditation or something you can share uh, a pro process or anything that you could do with the the listeners hmm. in this moment? Sure. Great. So, um, how about we all just sit back in our seats and um, become aware that the seat is supporting you without effort? And what if the universe does the same thing? It supports you without effort. And so I want you to become aware in this moment of maybe something that's troubling you or challenging you or you're in question of, and just let that gently come to your mind. And then become aware of where it is in your body. And what that could feel like is a little constriction or a little tightness. Don't judge it, just be with it. Because that energy is inviting you to get a message, to learn, to get the answer to your question. So you breathe into that part of the body, it might be the throat or the, or the shoulders or the neck or, or your heart area or the solar plexus area. It could be in different parts of the body, but the one that is giving you the most energy in the moment, that's the place. And you want to activate your imagination. You don't have to be visual. Activate your imagination. And, and notice that that energy, that place in the body is opening kind of like a portal. It's becoming wider and it's becoming taller. It's becoming like a doorway. And you imagine that you can step into that doorway and you are on this path. It's exquisite. There's trees. It's the perfect weather. It's peaceful. And the more you walk down this path, the more peaceful you become. And in front of you, you see this garden. Incredibly beautiful flowers, all kinds of different colors and the fragrance is amazing. And so you walk and you begin to walk through this garden. And you become aware that there's a guide waiting for you. Now, this guide could be a person, an animal, an angel, someone who's still on this planet or someone who's passed, but they're here for you. And the first thing you recognize is they love you. They see you. 
And so you connect with this guide and you sit down in this beautiful garden and you tell this guide what's on your mind. What, what is the challenge? What is the thought? What is the desire? You just share it and you're aware that this guide is fully attentive, listening to you. You feel so free, so heard. And now that guide, that guide has a message for you regarding this very thing. What is the message? Just listen, you don't have to understand or do anything or fix it, just listen. What does the guide want you to know? And so you thank the guide who tells you this is a sacred place. You can come here anytime and they will be here for you. And they ask you to look to your right on the ground that there's a symbol for you. Now that symbol could be a rock, a flower, a mineral, whatever it is, you pick it up. You can feel the energy coursing through your body. This is a peace instrument. You take it with you. Thank the guide once again and begin to walk back through that garden. Feeling clearer, feeling stronger. And you get back to the road. And there's energy in your body that feels alive. And you walk back down the path. And you come back to the doorway. And you step through, bringing that peaceful energy with you. And the portal begins to close. And once it's closed, be aware of that part of the body. Is it more relaxed? Do you feel more tender? Do you feel more open? This is your natural state of being. Take one more breath. Feel your body in your seat. And when you are ready, very gently open your eyes and become present to this space. Hmm. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure that was a, a, a nice interlude for the people listening. And for me, that was fun. <laughs> 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 and you have uh, you have other meditations. I don't know if they're the same as this, but you have a series of meditations that you're wanting to give people. Yeah, and um, and, and Hale, I'm sorry. At this moment, I can't remember what I was giving you because I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a few of these back to back. But oh, that's yeah, okay. I do I do have a I have a I have a, a few meditations that I give people yes, to yes. just really help them um, pause and and go in and connect to their their beautiful inner life. That's great. That's great. But we'll put all that information in in the show notes. So uh, do you have uh, anything else that you'd like to uh, share before we wrap it up? I guess I want anybody listening to know you're a masterpiece in the making. You're, you are an extraordinary light on this planet and you're here by design. 
nothing and no one can stand in the way of your health, your well-being, your joy, and your freedom. So take advantage because the world is waiting for you. I hope you've enjoyed our conversation with Cynthia James. You can learn more about Cynthia at CynthiaJames.net. That's C-Y-N-T-H-I-A-J-A-M-E-S dot net. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please subscribe so you have immediate access to future episodes. Please give us a five-star rating and share it with the people you care about. If you'd like to learn more about my work, my mentor, Lester Levinson's work, and the Sedona Method, please visit www.sedona.com. As you explore our site, you'll learn the key to lasting happiness, success, peace, and emotional well-being. We have books, courses, events, and plenty of free material to explore. Again, go to sedona.com. That's S-E-D-O-N-A dot com. Thank you for being here. And we'll catch you on the next episode of Letting Go and the Greatest Secret.